Okay, back with you on the Bronx Buzz, switching gears as we always do in the middle of this program. And uh, let's bring on Jose Esquia. Uh, nice to have you with us, Jose. Jose is an independent director and producer of film and theater. He's also, and that's why he's here, an instructor and coach for the Knowledge Project, which does some wonderful things with our uh, kids in our schools. And uh, he's the instructor coach for the Knowledge, Knowledge Project online course, How to Make a Movie in 24 Hours. So um, nice to see you. Um, thanks for joining us. Tell me about um, The Hidden Force. Who created it? What is it? And um, why is it a good example of what it is you do with the Knowledge Project? Sure. First of all, thank you for having me. And for sure. Having me. Um, so The Hidden Force is a film uh, written and directed by Dennis Prendy, who is actually a Bronxite from the Pelham Bay area. And he is a student at performing arts, uh, professional performing arts school in Midtown Manhattan. He was one of the students uh, during COVID that took advantage of our course, um, How to Make a Movie in 24 Hours. And Hidden Force is his, uh, his uh, sci-fi conceptual idea of this uh, world uh, that exists between our world and, and this sort of fantastic uh, uh, reality that gets created uh, in, in what appears to be an accident. The reason that I'm smiling is, you know, one of the things I expressed to you beforehand, having young people have a chance to play out their fantasies or play out their ideas and do it on a piece of artwork or film or photography or whatever it is, is in this day and age when the kids have frankly, been so abused, having to go to school online and, you know, they can't even see people's faces um, is, is a really important thing. And talk to me a little bit about working with the young people and watching them create something, guiding them in that creation. Just give, give me a little insight of what it, what it looks like and what it feels like for you as their, as their leader and instructor. Um, sure. One of the things that was uh, really fascinating about this iteration is that uh, like everyone else, we had to switch gears in the mode of instruction for our students. Uh -huh. We are normally a limiting artist program, and we go into the schools and we work with the students in the classroom. Uh -huh. um, and like everybody else, we had to pivot and do so online. Um, so our method of instruction and delivery had to be tailored to this new mode, right? As, as we as we have new reality, man. We know exactly. it exactly for sure. Exactly. And uh, however, one of the things that is amazing about present day um, technology, particularly in filmmaking, is that unlike when I was a young filmmaker, a filmmaker has a capacity to do pretty much everything on their phone. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. This yeah. is it. You yeah. need a camera, you need an editor, whatever it is, exactly. you can just do it. And, and I'll tell you, you and I are a little older. The kids yeah. can do it. They, yeah. they can just they know how it works. Exactly. I don't know how it works. <laughs> exactly. And so so uh, it, the interesting thing that that we had to learn to convey to the children was that that the way that you accomplish a goal is to properly plan uh, your course of action. So one of the funny things about the title of the course, making a movie in 24 hours, was that initially the course was going to be about everything that pre-production should be and all the planning and preparation that it takes to get yourself together to go out and pursue your own project. Uh, unfortunately, pre-production and everything that you should know about preparing was not exactly the most attractive title to teenagers. <laughs> uh, oh, I see. Oh, I see. So they, now, is this a voluntary? This is a voluntary, like after-school project, or is it something that's part of the curriculum over there at the uh, Professional Performing Arts Academy? No, actually, when the when the Knowledge Project comes into a school. Uh, the group of students are self-selected. So they are choosing oh. to take on, take on these projects above and beyond everything that they're already working on that is part of their curriculum in school and their extracurricular projects, which is one of the reasons why we really admire the young people that work with us. Um, so like I said, we, we shifted everything, including our title, and the 24 hours of the class was essentially the number of hours that they were going to be instructed on how to do the project. And then they had to go out and complete the project. Well, wow. and, and the parameters of COVID. And and this group did that in twenty four hours. Yes. So uh -huh. so they took the twenty four. My hats off. I I I'm, I'm respect. You know. 
Yeah. So, so just so that everyone is aware, they they didn't like not sleep for twenty four hours and only do our course. <laughs> we met uh, twice a week for a certain number of hours, and the total number of hours equaled twenty four. You are abusing our kids. That's the last yeah. thing you want to hear. So, uh, <laughs> and then so, after that, they went out into the field and did production. And, um, and in this case, it literally is the field. Um, so I'm going to we have a little trailer we're going to show. Um, so I'm, I'm going to read the description as four friends reconnect their nostalgic friendship. They fall into an invisible world trapped. Each must fight for their survival. Even as one friend becomes temporarily lost and succumbs to the hidden force. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Is that, that's a good introduction here, right? Absolutely. All right, here we are. Ladies and gentlemen, from the students at uh, the performing, excuse me, professional performing arts school in Manhattan. Bronx kids at the top. Uh, let's take a look. The Hidden Force. When happiness turns into darkness and memories into nightmares. Be afraid. Be very afraid. There we go. Um, now, I, so I mean, it's tremendous work, and I mean, they even got the titles. You know, they did the the whole thing with the background music and the sound effects. Um, how long is the film itself? The film itself, uh, I believe, it totaled about ten minutes altogether. Uh huh. Um, how would you? I don't want to necessarily ask you to give it a grade, but how would you evaluate this group of students and what they did? By the way, I think we have some photos of the kids, so let's uh, take a look at that. Mm -hmm. But how would you evaluate what you what we just saw and and the the whole ten minute film? Well, I I think uh, I, I certainly would give them. Uh, well, I, I mean, I'm biased, but there's Dennis and his parents. Um, and those are the cast and crew at Performing Arts High School during the uh, the school premiere. Uh, I would absolutely give them an A plus. Uh, really, even though I'm biased, and the reason for that is not just solely because they understood the mechanics uh, and logistics of film production, but you have to remember that they did this at the height of COVID, so they had to learn to deal with a set of restrictions and circumstances that really all of us had to deal with uh, together. And they still delivered on the project. And they still did it. Fantastic. Listen, I want to ask you about something else. As I understand, uh, you're currently in production for a, a presentation of the James Baldwin uh, screenplay reading of uh, One Day When I Was Lost, which is about the life of um, Malcolm X. Talk to me a little bit about uh, that project. Sure. Um, that project will take place uh, during Black History Month. Uh, it'll be free uh, to the audience, uh, just donation-based. And it will be the first time since the screenplay was written by James Baldwin in the late 60s uh, mm -hmm. that it will be written in its entirety in public. Uh, the, we are uh, procuring donations for both the Malcolm and Betty Shabazz Center at, at the Audubon Ballroom and for Entrepreneurs of Tomorrow, which is an organization that does uh, work with children in the inner city to teach them how to run their own businesses. So is, I just want to be clear in my own mind, is this connected to, um, you know, the other work in the knowledge project, or this is just something you are working on? Uh, this is something that I am working on and it is also supported by the knowledge project. Right. Uh, and and so you, you had mentioned that there will be some young people involved. I'm assuming that's the case. Uh, well, in this case, the young people will be involved in the uh, one of the really great honors of this project is that the final reading is going to become part of the James Baldwin archives. So we are hoping to get young people involved in the capture of the rehearsal process and presentation um, for, of the piece. You know, that's particularly relevant. You know, he was here in the Bronx at Dewood Clinton High School, my alma mater. And uh, there, you know, his legacy still rings true 
uh, for many of us who did graduate from Dewey Clinton High School, but also for um, people over there. Okay, so um, let's just talk about what's next. Now, you worked with a group here on that um, film. Are there other groups that that are working on films? Um, uh, do you just do one film at a time? How, how does it all work? And um, certainly if anybody wants to contact you or the Knowledge Project about these things, uh, how do they do that? Well, uh, certainly, if you, uh, I would say the best way to to get a hold of what we do as a Knowledge Project is to contact the Knowledge Project at the Knowledge Project uh, dot org, um, and that's usually done. Uh, the schools usually contact the organization, and then depending on all the different things that are taught by the Knowledge Project, where there are professionals that teach everything from stand up to journalism, uh, we then come in as a set of instructors and. Uh, now we know whether it's physically in the building or whether it's online, we can then provide uh, that enrichment for the students and the young people in your area. Um, I myself can be reached via Twitter or Instagram at J.A. Esquia, um, and I work independently as a film director and producer uh, and even a martial arts instructor. But, but clearly this is a labor of love when you get to work with young people. But the first part of my question is, do you do more than one of these projects at a time or do you really just do like that one film? In other words, you got a whole group of them going. How does, how does it work? I personally tend to hone on uh, one uh, children, child led project or young person led project right. and okay. one adult led project this way. Right. I focus my energy and do my best to deliver the best. Right. And, and you could see that if they do this, they'll be able, the world is their oyster, so to speak. Absolutely. Right. Anyway, Jose Esquia uh, from the Knowledge Project and also from uh, the uh, Professional Performing Arts School in Manhattan. Thank you so much. Thank you. For, what, what's that? I said, and from the Bronx. And Well, of course, that's why you're here. That's that's like the first requirement for us on the Bronx Buzz. Anyway, thank you so much. Thanks for working with our kids. And uh, we, you know, you got something new. We want we want to be here and we want to show it. Um, so thank you so much. And uh, that will do it for our program uh, for this evening. Uh, we thank Rebecca C. Lewis uh, from City and State, New York, and we appreciate her time. We appreciate Jose's time. And guess what? We'll be here next week for more. Have a good night. Mm-hmm.